Hi, welcome back to CVEN 305. Last class we saw something about some experiments on torsion of hollow tubes. If you remember, we made a tube like this and we twisted it, right? So, and in fact, we tried to figure out what the stresses were and so on. So let's repeat this problem, but this time we actually want to obtain mathematical symbolic expressions that will allow us to link how the body deforms with how the stress is applied. So the idea is the following. If I have a tube like this, so remember I'm talking about a thin hollow tube. Well, this is not really thin, but that's the best I can do. Really a thin hollow tube looks more like this. You know what I mean? The thin hollow tube is what we are looking at. And the idea is I want to be able to transmit angular momentum through this tube rotation. Okay. So how do I transmit angular momentum? I have to take a cross sectional area and I have to twist it. And when I twist it, is it obvious to you that the two to the two pencils which are lined up here will become a certain angle, right? And I want to relate how much does it twist with respect to sorry about that. How much does it twist with respect to what is the angle of twist? Okay, how, how much does it twist with respect to the torque? So this is what we are trying to get. So the question is, how can I apply a torque to a body? And this is actually a kind of a tricky one. One thing I can do is hold the side surfaces together like this and twist it like that. That kind of twisting is usually what is there in a clutch plate. You know, in your car, there's a clutch plate that is typically if you have a, um, if you have a stick shift car, it'll have two plates that come together like this and it transmits angular motion from one plate to the other through applying torque over the surface like that frictional torque other thing i can do is grab onto the side like this and twist that's the second way in which i can apply torque third way in which i can apply torque is to hold on to two pieces and do like that right all of them will cause the thing to twist we are talking not near where i'm holding but away from it that's when i'm really that's the region where i'm interested because away from it it doesn't matter how i apply the torque it just means that the thing gets twisted okay so what happens when i apply a torque okay what happens when i apply a torque so here is a tube and you can see these straight lines the first thing I want you to observe is that circular sections remain circular, but longitudinal lines, the vertical lines kind of wrap around, they become a helix. And we saw that last class, there you can see, there you can see the helix, right? The more I twist, the more helical it becomes. Is that obvious to you? Can you see the helix? It goes like that, right? So same way, if I took a solid shaft and if I twisted it, You can see how straight lines have become helices, right? There it's, it's vertical lines, vertical lines get twisted, wrapped around, around and around and around. I'm making several wraps. So by the time I'm finished, vertical lines have become helices. And this is for a solid tube. Same thing for a hollow tube. And right now we are only focused on a thin hollow tube like this. To understand what's going on, we are going to switch to some pictures because I want, to, I want you to see what happens, okay? Here is the picture, before and after picture. I'm gonna blow it up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay, there you go. Okay, so this is the before picture. The first one is the before picture and the second one is a perspective and side view of the after picture so because i want to show you what happens okay so in the before picture i want you to focus on the line cb that line right if i cut it and open it out is it obvious to you that i will get a rectangular piece like that so what i'm going to do now is keep the bottom fixed so the bottom is fixed and i'm going to twist the top this way When I do that, can you see that A, B, C will become A prime, B prime, C prime. It will become this line. 
right? And it's actually wrapped around. And the distance by which it moves is C C prime. So C C prime equals if the radius of the tube is R and the angle of the tube is phi, I mean the angle of twist is phi, that is the angle. So getting back here, if you look at the two vertical lines and if I twist it, the angle made by them is the angle of the V. Can you see that? That's phi. That's how much this end moved with respect to that end. Okay? So the angle of the tube is phi. Okay? So the total amount, the distance by which it moves is R times phi. And phi is in radians. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is in the side view, I'm going to cut along this. When you cut along this, what used to be originally rectangular of length L, what used to be like this, and you can see ABC here, ABC has become A prime, B prime, C prime, and the distance by which it has moved is R phi, and this length is L. Right? So, our shear stream, so our first idea is the following, shear stream is R phi over L. This is, if I, if I call this the x direction and this the y direction, then this will be gamma y sorry x y in reality that's not really the x direction that's the r direction and that's the z direction so this will really be called gamma r z but i don't really care about it right now all i want you to know is we are just going to call this gamma So that was easy enough, right? So why do I care about the shear stream? Because I want to use Hooke's law. If I use Hooke's law, it will tell me the connection between shear strain and shear stress. So our process is the following. Deflection, in this case, rotation. Then I'm going to convert it into strain. Then Hooke's law will convert it, will tell me about the stress which then I can calculate the torque. So strain to stress is Hooke's law. This is geometry. And stress to torque is integration. I'll show you what I mean. Here. Okay, so that's a very important relation. So the next thing that we are going to do is, once I know the shear strain, Then shear stress will be G times gamma, which will be G R phi over L. I don't want to write R this way because it looks like gamma. So I want to make sure that I write R as capital R. So you know. So let me explain what this means. This is shear stress on wall equals shear modulus times radius times angle of twist per unit length. So now let us look on the top. So here it is. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm supposed to draw a circle. That's not really a circle. Let me try that again. So there are some much better, right? This is the top view. And I'm going to try and draw a thin circle like that. It's terrible, but I will try. Okay, that's a thin circle. 
So this is the center line of the circle. And the shear stress in the wall is tau, 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 like that. It's the same everywhere, right? And it kind of circulates around. Can you see how it's circulating around? It circulates around. Can you see that? And this radius is R. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to divide it into small chunks. And I'm going to calculate what is the torque due to each chunk. Right? So, each chunk has angle delta theta. That's a chunk. So, I'm going to look at how much torque is due to this chunk. That's easy. Torque equals uh, moment on times force. So, in this case, moment on is R. That's R times force is shear stress times thickness times because I want to calculate the area right area is thickness times r delta theta can you see that this is area this is stress so that gives me r tau t sorry r square tau t delta theta and if I sum it over all delta theta, I will get total torque T equal to summation R square tau T delta theta. And I know what is tau? Sigma. So first thing I am going to do is, I am going to replace, of course, now calculus to the rescue. Because I, how do I do the summation? I am going to replace the summation by an integral. So you see, there is some use to calculus. The integral r square tau t delta theta sorry d theta and that goes from 0 to 2 pi with a full circle and that's easy to do in our case t equals integral 0 to 2 pi r square t is the thickness so just to remind yourself T is the thickness of the wall. In case I forgot to mention, but T is the thickness of the wall. Tau is, we know what it is, right? It's here. It is GR phi over L. Times T D theta, which turns out to be integral 0 to 2 pi of d theta because nothing depends upon theta times r cube t g phi over l this turns out to be looks kind of messy but don't worry you will simplify it very nicely so this turns out to be 2 pi r cube t g phi over l so I want to write this in a convenient form because I want it to look remember when I did when we did axial bars the situation was very easy right the applied force was F and you had u equal to FL over EA we want similar things that is I want load here I want length here I want modulus and I want cross-sectional property right do you think we can get all that let's see in our case the load is T right length is L so those two things are there so I'm going to move this to that side divided by cross uh, the mo modulus is shear modulus and then the cross-sectional property is the rest of them which is called J and on this side I am going to have phi. So phi equals TL over GJ and J is 
टू पाई आर क्यूब ओवर सॉरी टू पाई आर क्यूब टाइम्स टी दिस इज कॉल्ड पोलॉर मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ ए क्यूब आई वॉन्ट यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट सो लेट एस राइट दिस फी इक्वल्स टी एल ओवर जी जे सो दिस जॉइंस अवर फॉर्मूला डिस्प्लेसमेंट इक्वल्स एफ एल ओवर ई ए सो नोट एस आई गोट राइट दिस इन वर्ड सो एंगल ऑफ ट्विस्ट equals torque times length divided by modulus times polar moment of inertia this is what relates angle of twist to torque so if you know how much torque you are applying you can calculate the angle of twist and vice versa for a hollow tube what happens for a solid tube so i'm going to go and talk about solid tube so what we are going to do for a solid tube is very simple we're going to take this tube this is solid now this is not a tube anymore this is a solid cylinder okay for a solid cylinder how are we going to do it what we are going to do is pretend it is concentric tubes it's like tube within a tube within a tube so tube number 1 tube number 2 tube number 3 like that okay so the radius of the eighth tube is r i thickness equals delta r so our formula reads t i this is the torque due to the ith tube t i is let's see what what was it that we calculated it here right here two pi r cube t g v over l so i'm going to use that two pi r i cube g v over l delta r i so this is delta r this is r and again calculus to the rescue so if i want to calculate the total torque i sum it all and this one will be integral 2 pi r cube over l g v dr 0 to capital r ah that's a easy integral to do that turns out to be 2 pi g v over l r to the 4th over 4 which i can write it as r 4th pi g v over 2 l if i substitute for r in terms of diameter so this is d over 2 to the 4th pi g v 
over 2L which is pi d fourth over 32 times g times phi over L. Okay, so the torque equals this is again called J. This is J solid times G times phi over L, which again I can write it as phi equal to TL over J solid G. So this is for a solid shaft. And J solid is pi d fourth over 32. For a hollow shaft, phi equal to TL over J hollow G for a hollow shaft. And J hollow equals pi r cubed t. So these are the two major results that you need to think about and if I were to plot the stresses on the outermost fibers the stress will be very large. Why is that? So I want you to understand that the stress and this is important for failure criteria stress is given by if i know that if i know the torque and the angle of twist i can find the stress if you remember hang on for a second i'm sorry i'm just kind of moving it around a little bit but we'll get there hey what the what the heck happened oh here we go strain is r phi over l and the stress is G times R phi over L. So remember that the stress in a shaft R phi over L. So bigger the radius has more stress. So in a solid shaft, the outermost, outermost layer will have very high stress because it has huge radius. As you go inner, it will get less. So it will keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until at the center there is no stress. I want you to understand. So what's the deal? The most important contribution to torque and remember torque is stress times radius times area, right? So notice that the outermost layers will give you much higher torque. The inner core is not doing much. So if you come back to your tube, the center of the tube is not doing much. It's only the outer surface of the, of the tube that's actually taking part in this twisting action. That's why hollow tubes are pretty good because don't waste material when nothing is happening. Okay, so put material where it counts. So the typical idea is don't put material where the stresses are low. So don't put, so the idea is if at all possible use hollow tubes. That's why your bicycle frames, all kinds of things are hollow tubes because there's no point in making a solid tube. You just add weight, you don't get any benefit. Okay, thank you very much.